get the new candidates added. Hello there. All right, we ready? Not yet. One moment, we're waiting to get one more on. All right. If before we get started on this next um, section, folks want to take a look in the comments who are on Facebook doing live stream, we've just posted the link to register to vote. So if you're not registered to vote and would like to be, the County Democratic Party would like to encourage you to register to vote online uh, during our next segment. Uh, with that, Kathy, if you wanna go ahead and uh, start the next panelists. Okay. The first thing I would ask uh, the candidates to unmute your mics. Um, and so that you know, you each have one minute introduction. Then our moderator, former Mayor Elihu Harris will uh, conduct the question and answer period. You have one minute to answer your questions unless he deems that he wants to give you more at the front end of the question because it's so complex. And then you will have one minute closing at the end. Uh, let me ask you if you both have your screen on gallery view and can you see this sign? I can see that sign. You can see it, yes. Okay, I am the timekeeper. For your one minute, you will see a sign that says 15 seconds. And then when your time is up, you will see one that says stop. So please pay attention to those, or I will interrupt you. <laughs> so with that, I'll hand it over to former Mayor Elihu Harris. Well, gentlemen, welcome. Uh, if you run through the stop sign, you will be penalized. I think you've been warned. <laughs> Even a rolling stop will probably get you a ticket. All right. Uh, let me thank you both for your participation in the Alameda County Democratic Central Committee's uh, forum uh, for candidates. Uh, district 5 is certainly a, a very interesting district. It has great history. Uh, certainly it had uh, often been seen as, a, 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 as an Hispanic district, uh, but certainly more important, it's a very diverse district that represents a wide variety of ethnicities and cultures. Uh, in your opening minute, I want you to explain why you think you are the best candidate to represent the diversity of District 5 uh, and why uh, you, uh, you believe that you can, in fact, uh, represent that district with not only a vigor and enthusiasm, but with solutions to very complex problems. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Rea. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate that. Okay, so I was born in San Jose, California, and I moved to Fruitvale at the age of five with my young parents. They were both grad students at UC Berkeley at that time. And, you know, I suffered a little bit of tragedy when I was a kid. My birth mom passed away when I was five, and I've talked a bit about that. But the, the, the beauty that came out of that tragedy uh, was that when my father remarried, I was born into, or I received a beautifully blended family. My father is old school Chicano, grew up in the Central Valley in San Jose, and my mom is a black woman who grew up in the Bay, Berkeley and Oakland. So I got to really see firsthand the diversity that makes Oakland so beautiful, where we can all go to the taco truck together and get some Vietnamese food afterward. Like that was my upbringing. So from a diversity standpoint, that's kind of in my blood. My family is blended. My experience has been blended. And I feel really confident that I can represent this, this modern and thriving multicultural Oakland. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Kyle. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, uh, Mayor Harris. I, I want to first recognize her leadership, you know, for being a mayor and assembly person, uh, Peralta Chandler. So I want to recognize, thank you for your leadership to Oakland. Noel Gallo, I, I grew up here in East Oakland, continue to live and raise three daughters and a son. All came out of the, uh, the open public schools, Oakland High, Fremont High School. They all came out of, graduated from Stanford and UC Berkeley. I myself came out of a uh, East Oakland and went on to UC Berkeley and graduated from the School of Business Administration. I served on the open board for 20 years. I've been on the council for seven and a half years. And for me, it's not about what you say, but what you do and what you demonstrate to the public you have done. And for, so I bring the experience, the work ethic, and certainly know the issues that I'm trying to address, not only Monday through Friday, but on a daily basis here at the neighborhood level. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, as I said, District 5 is, is, is a very complex district, very diverse. 
uh, certainly is in the heart of the uh, Latino community uh, in Oakland. Uh, but again, it has uh, many of the same challenges other districts in Oakland face. I want you to talk a little bit about uh, affordable housing, uh, certainly uh, gentrification as it affects District 5, uh, what you think ought to happen relative to the homeless uh, in District 5, and overall the solutions relative to housing and maintaining the diversity that is uh, the fifth council district in Oakland. I'm gonna start with you, Mr. Guile. Yes, I, you know, I've been a, one of the leaders here in this district and throughout the city when it comes to housing. I believe that you know when it comes to public land, we ought to let the public and develop housing. I've been part of the, the Unity Council's uh, latest development uh, with the Casa Rabela and also with the new phase two development that is gonna bring housing to 200 units, not only to deal with affordable housing, but also be able to house the homeless that we have in our neighborhoods uh, in the areas. And I'm also working with uh, the Native American Health Center. I was one that helped them uh, obtain the land from the city and also help with the funding source and the, and the selection of the Saha Management Group. And throughout the area of Jingletown and throughout the area of East Oakland and District 5, there are many development housing projects in progress that will not only take care of our home, our, our homeless affordability housing, but also deal with our teachers that we need to maintain in this city and house them as well. So I, you know, I can, I'm honored to have taken a leadership role uh, throughout the years when it comes to housing. Thank you. Mr. Rea, same question. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's time to get creative. You know, I think uh, we're not going to develop our way out of our, our, our housing problem. We're not. You know, we've kind of been trying that the past 8, 10, 12 years, and we've seen it's only gotten worse. You know, our homelessness solutions can't be piecemeal, can't be piecemeal. They can't be individual. They got to be systemic, right? So the city needs to do the work necessary to bring in extra revenue and realign its budget so we can put our money where our progressive values are and actually subsidize housing for people, convert empty housing into housing for homeless, for unhoused people, and really work toward that star on the hill of housing for all. So realigning our budget, increasing our revenue streams, thank you for the time, and um, just making sure that no option is left off the table because listen, developers gotta play by strict PLAs and CBAs going forward, but developing alone isn't gonna be our solution. It hasn't been. All right, thank you both very much. Uh, let me talk a little bit about <clears throat> another issue uh, that most of the other candidates have talked about, and that's the issue of the Oakland A's. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ray, I'll start with you. What is your position on the Oakland A's move to the uh, Harvard Terminal site? Or do you support uh, the sole, sole, sole site, uh, sole bidder uh, approach to selling the Coliseum site? Overall, what is your position on the A's and a potential development and or retention deal? Well, thank you for asking probably one of the more complicated questions we're going to get relatively early when we still have our, our stamina. But, but <laughs> I, uh, you know, this is so complicated, right? This is city governance at, at, at its purest. Um, everyone has a different opinion. My opinion is that, as I touched on last time, I want moving forward every development or project that happens in Oakland to abide by strict environmental and labor uh, agreements and guidelines. Currently, um, the Longshoremen's uh, Workers Unions and environmental groups oppose the A's moving to Howard Terminal because of the environmental degradation that'll happen and because of the chance that it'll increase rents, not be done equitably, and, and we won't see the wealth of that. Now, I think that if we can institute strong environmental uh, regulations, I'd be open to that construction. But as it stands right now, I think it's such a complicated issue that we can't move forward without slowing down, making our time that it's done equitably. Mr. Gaio. Yes, I, I, um, I represent East Oakland. Growing up in East Oakland, I've been a lifetime ace fan and certainly continue to enjoy baseball. And, uh, but my, my, my strong commitment is still and I communicate with the Oakland A's on a regular basis. My preference is for the A's to continue to develop, stay in East Oakland at the Coliseum area. That land belongs to the public. We would like to see them continue to develop it. Uh, and, and at the same time, I'm the one that opened up negotiations with the A's because it's gonna be a long-term process. 
It's going to be a long-term process. I'm talking about 10 years to develop Howard Terminal based on all the environmental and challenges that they have. But at the same time, they already have a four or five year lease at the Coliseum to continue to play baseball. And at the same time, right now, Robert Bob, the previous city manager, is taking a lead, created an African develop an African uh, management group that's willing to invest at the Coliseum, bring football, because we already started communicating with the NFL and they're interested in coming back to Oakland. Women's basketball wants to play at the Coliseum, including the Roots uh, Soccer Club and Marshawn Lynch with his football team. So there are many other opportunities. Me, you're, you're to open, is that. And uh, we're pursuing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. The door is not closed. <laughs> Let me move on and, and talk a little bit about homelessness. Homelessness uh, uh, affects the entire city and certainly it affects District 5. What is your sense of how we should resolve that issue? I'm going to start with you, Mr. Guy. Uh, are there sites in District 5 that you believe are, are suitable for uh, siting homeless housing? Or what do you think we ought to be doing relative to this problem? Uh, it yeah. certainly is not a, a problem that, you, you know. know uh, homeless is certainly a, an, a, an, an activity that I know extremely well. Every Saturday and Sunday, I'm out there in the neighborhood, not only cleaning the environment, because I believe in a safe, clean, healthy city. So I not only clean the streets, the sidewalks, but we go into the encampments, pick up all the needles and trash that go on, on a regular basis. But I also provide meals to serve them, uh, to provide other services that are necessary. The reality in District 5, yes, the homelessness has increased, but I also happen to know the grandma and grandpa that went up in their car, that we're trying to provide housing. But this is where the county has failed the city. Because I do agree in creating uh, housing and space. I grew up in the Housing Authority Section 8. So I understand that need where housing through the federal government has disappeared practically in open. So what I believe in doing is the public land that I have allowed to develop housing, but not interfere with the mom and dad and their children trying to raise their kids and have them walk to school where they don't run into that, that uh, challenge sometimes. And so I do believe in adding additional housing for the homeless. Yes, thank you. All right, Mr. Ram. Thank you, yeah. And we touched on this a little bit before, but um, I also just wanna add, I had the chance to go on one ride along with uh, Councilmember Gallo to you know, sort of see how he serves the community. And it was really illuminating, really educational, and I definitely have a lot of respect for it. I do think though that the Oakland electorate is moving to a point where we want our public leaders to have public health solutions to our public health problems that are gonna be solved with more expansive solutions uh, going forward. So I definitely support working collaboratively with people to build and maintain more housing, which hopefully if we don't build substandard housing and actually build housing that the city of Oakland can be proud of, that the people that we are housing can be proud of, then it won't be a nuisance when people are walking to school. It won't be a nuisance to the rest of the city. You know, it's time to put an end to the problem. California is the richest nation uh, the richest state in the nation, right? Alameda County has a lot in the reserves. Let's work with our allies from the bottom to the top and make sure that we can house people uh, once and for all. Thank you both for that question. Uh, let me ask another question, uh, both of you. And, and that is uh, deal, dealing with the issue of the city budget. Um, I've asked everybody some form of this question. Uh, I think the city is going to have an even bigger budget crisis in the next fiscal year than it did this year. Uh, I want to ask both of you, and I'm going to start with Mr. Rea, how would you propose to balance the city's budget? Would you do it with tax increases, cuts, and if so, what would you cut? Uh, how would you deal with this? What I will be, believe will be a fairly significant uh, budget issue uh, in the uh, coming budget cycle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, it's huge. It's the coming crisis, right? I think it's so imminent. I definitely would have voted to... Um, I definitely would not have voted to postpone the progressive business tax that was discussed earlier this year on the city council. I think we do need to aggressively explore new revenue streams that are also in line with our values, like that progressive business tax. I think we also may have to make cuts, but it needs to be cuts that align with our values. And we've seen this summer, you know, we're having a national conversation about police, one that kind of began in Oakland, not only with the Panthers, but with the killing of Oscar Grant. You know, so the police need to be restructured. And in many cases, that will mean that will mean being reduced and re-improved and reinvested in other areas. So thank you. Yeah. So in sum, we need to explore new revenue ideas like a progressive business tax. And we also need to be really curious about 
the program that's taking up almost four, you know 50 percent of our general fund budget which is the police thank you economic development there's a lot of small businesses in district five uh but let me, before i do let me ask i'm sorry the same question uh to council member guile yes I, you know i think the reality is we do need to continue to grow our small business businesses in Oakland, because if I don't have a job, I can't take care of myself and I cannot take care of my family. So I'm, not, to, I'm sorry, I, I got a little past myself. I want you to talk about the budget and the tax. And I'll come back. Okay. Yeah, so, so dealing with the budget, the reality, we had $112 million deficit. And the council, at least some of us, made a commitment that we were not going to lay anyone off or furlough any employee within the city of Oakland. And that's where some of our revenue went to to make sure that everyone in Oakland stayed employed so they wouldn't have to be out on the street and so forth. Now, when it comes to the policing issue, I am willing to make changes, uh, redefine public safety. And I think we're already working within the police department, within administration to be able to remove some of the activity that the police are currently involved in that perhaps another entity, another department department can take care of. Something as simple as Alec, you as you being mayor, right now they have a sworn officer at the headquarters monitoring their parking lot hmm. where public works used to do that work. Why do I have a sworn officer taking care of their parking lot when they should be on the street patrolling our streets? So simple actions like that, they're already on the way to make sure that we shift some of the revenue from policing to the neighborhood level. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, now I'm gonna go on about small business. I'm gonna come right back to you, uh, Councilman Gallo. Uh, small businesses are obviously are the heartbeat uh, of, of the city. The port certainly has a lot of large businesses, but most of the businesses in the city of Oakland are small businesses. Uh, they have been taking a, a, a butt kicking over the last 20 years, both because of high rent, uh, as well as the uh, issues that affect them in terms of the competition from larger grocery stores and, 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 and out of town chains. What do you believe we ought to be doing relative to both nurturing as well as uh, increasing the number of small businesses, particularly in District 5, but throughout the city? Well, you know, right now, what, what, what I have done is taken a lead in terms of the rent moratoriums to make sure that the employees that were working there got laid off and need a place to stay and also be able to pay the rent. So I was a, a big supporter from the beginning. And when we come back, we're gonna extend the moratorium on rent control. And so many of those uh, rent uh, uh, services that are needed to make sure we take care of my, the people that live in my district, that live next door to me, are able to maintain their children and families attending school and so forth. So I'm a big supporter when it comes to the business and that's why we created the bus rapid transit system to be able to attract more customers, improve transportation, but be able to support the local businesses because we do need to maintain them because they represent 90% of Oakland's income taxation. And I need to have the small business people here because they're the entry level type employer that I need, but I need a clean, safe, healthy environment to bring customers in to the neighborhood so they can go to the restaurant, do their shopping. And so we're continuously working on that clean, safe, healthy environment to attract businesses to, uh, to stay in Oakland, but customers to come and shop. Thank you. Mr. Rea. Yeah, echoing a few things that have already been said, we can protect our small businesses with rent control. We can also just protect our small businesses with well-administered and well-executed policy. I think an unfortunate side effect of the BRT that the council member mentioned is a lot of businesses have been suffering because of the construction. You know, So whatever we do moving forward, we always have to do it with the small business interests in mind. So they don't have to suffer. They were suffering before COVID and they're especially suffering right now. Uh, I think the city is already looking at some innovative ideas to foster small business, both from a land standpoint and just an economic assistance standpoint. The Black Cultural Zone is, I believe, a proposal that's coming down the pipeline that should help out some small businesses, especially, you know, people of color, black owned businesses. Uh, but the city, as we continue to get our budget back in order and reduce our deficit, we can get more creative and aggressive with ways that we either subsidize landlords or provide direct transfusions of aid to small businesses. So we keep that, that's the, the culture and integrity of Oakland right there. Thank you. Okay, some rapid questions. Um, Mr. Guile, let me start with you. What is your position 
on the uh, initiative on the ballot to increase the powers of the uh, Oakland Police Commission. Why, well, you know, I completely support that. I was one of the founders of the original police commission. I led that effort all the way and that's why the police department has never endorsed me. And I, so I was the leader of that and I helped lead the second effort and I advocated for their additional staffing levels for the additional support from the city, but there was some uh, dispute debate within administration and through and the mayor's office where, where that was a constant struggle. And uh, so, to, you know, from the beginning to the end, I support the police commission, uh, their independence to be able to guide us with public safety. I wanna get away from the NSA and that's one action that I believe will remove the, the federal monitoring system that's cost me millions of dollars throughout the time. And so, so I am a big supporter and I encourage all our voters to please get out and support for the police commission. Uh, we're at a, at a situation that we do need their advocacy, their support to make sure that our children and families have a productive life here in the neighborhood. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, totally agree. Definitely agree the an empowered co police commission, but that alone also is not enough without city council support to reduce and reinvest, right? Uh, the commission can't act alone. So I support their increase in power and I support a really engaged city council that also does its part from, a, from their own budgetary standpoint to assist in their endeavors. Okay, uh, let me ask a question relative to uh, uh, issues relative, uh, again, relative to policing. Do you believe that the standard for the police use of force ought to be changed from reasonable force, or do you believe there ought to be a higher standard? Reasonable, I'm sorry, reasonable use of force. Uh, should it be reasonable force? It should be necessary. What do you think the standard ought to be for the use of, uh, of deadly force by the Oakland police officers? I'm gonna start with you, Mr. Ray. The standard needs to increase. And I love this question. I, I actually wrote a paper about this. I wrote a whole article about this. You can find it online in college. I wrote about this in law school extensively, and I, I worked for this during my time at the public defender's office when I was a law student. That standard needs to go up. Reasonable in a modern society is, is so culturally subjective. And we know that culture doesn't favor people of color, especially black people. So we need a higher standard beyond reasonable that will actually save lives. Reasonable fear as it stands, it can be twisted, can be misinterpreted, and as we've seen, results in the death of far too many of our, of our residents. Mm -hmm. So we need a higher standard, whether that's, uh, I mean, whether, whether that's like a imminent fear of direct danger or whatever that ends up being, we need a higher standard. We, we definitely need that. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, let me ask a couple more questions with each of you. Um, in, in the city of Oakland, we've, we've got about five more minutes um, or six minutes to wrap up, so maybe time for one more question. Okay. So uh, I, I know uh, Mr. Guy indicated that he supported an extension of the uh, rent moratorium, uh, but at some point the bill is going to become come due. Uh, I wanted to ask Mr. Guy, what do you think can be done at some point when the moratorium is over? We're still obviously going to be in a financial crisis. What's going to happen to those tenants, whether they be business or residential? Well, you know, it, you know, th that's a real good question, Ella Hugh. Like I say, you know, I see grandma and grandpa and I see some of my neighbors winding up in the street in their cars. And at the same time, you know, we, we closed down the jail. We've closing down, you know, and, and letting uh, prisoners come out in there. They're coming on our streets. They don't have a place to live. And certainly they don't have a job. So what I'm trying to do is protect my neighbor and the residents in East Oakland to at least be able to continue in their setting. And so until we regain this economy, get it back in shape where they can work and they can take care of their children. Because the reality, even right next door down my street, there's five living to a room mm -hmm. and some are 10 to a house. And that's why the virus is very active in some settings because we're bringing it to our kids, to our family, to grandma and grandpa. But, it, but the thing I don't want to do is put people on the streets. And that's why I think the federal government like we used to have under HUD, uh, you know, needs to continue to enhance the support to keep people in, in house. Otherwise, man, we're all gonna wind up on the street. And I grew up here in Oakland where, you know, ro robbing and stealing was acceptable. Right. And so I think that we gotta protect our residents. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rail. Can you, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, in other words, I, the question we had to do 
with what do you think ought to happen when the moratorium on rent, whether it be business or residential, is lifted? Uh, uh, what's going, what should the city do then? Is there any? Is there a solution, or are people just going to be out on the street? I mean, there needs to be a solution, right? I, ideally, in an ideal world, Oakland would have all the funds in the world to help people pay those missing payments so the landlords don't go hungry, but so people aren't getting put out on the street. But that's not the world we live in. So I agree with the council member here. It'd be great if we could get some federal support. That said, HUD often excludes people who are undocumented, right? So we're going to also have to rely, we're going to have to rely on the county. We might even have to make creative asks of the corporations that are in Oakland and around the Bay Area to say, you know, this is it's like extreme times. Extreme times call for extreme measures where we look out for our neighbor, right? So we may need to make some big asks of the landlords, developers, and businesses in our area, the big ones, to say, you know, we got to chip in right now because this was a once in a lifetime pandemic. And we need to make sure that we don't kick anyone out for something that was outside of their control. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, both. Uh, you have one minute each uh, to wrap up, uh, to indicate why. Uh, voters in District 5 should elect you uh, or re-elect you, Mr. Guile, to serve on the City Council uh, for four years. And uh, it's your shot. Give me your best case. Mr. Thank Guile. you. Thank you. And, and again, I want to thank uh, the residents, the voters, uh, for the number of years of your support, whether we're serving on the Open Board of Education or serving on the City Council. For me, I, I, I strongly believe that it's not about what you say, but what you do. And, and growing up here in the city was more, you know, thank, thanks to J. Alfred Smith and other leaderships that, that, that got me involved in different levels, was to give back. And so not only, you know, serving at a city hall, making all kinds of policies and laws is one thing, but actually implementing and implementing it in the neighborhoods with the greatest need. And that's why we believe in, in the whole effort of, of having a clean, safe, healthy environment so I can attract businesses, I can attract customers, and most of all, protect my children so they can walk to school and back home. Thank you, and I look for your support. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Rea. Yeah, thank you. You know, um, we're missing the Democratic National Convention right now, sitting here having this forum. And I think that's so interesting that we are watching the same drama play out on the national stage and on the city stage. And that drama is we want strong democratic leadership. And for that to happen, we need to make room for these young progressive ideas and leaders like AOC, like Bernie put out, to help keep our democracy strong, to rise to meet the modern challenges. So that's why I'm running is all these ideas that I have, they're not just my own. They're the people who've been out there marching with me. They're the people who've been doing this work through nonprofits for years. So we have an opportunity right here to make Oakland a leader nationally and continue to put progressive, bold ideas forth. You know, it is about what you say. Your word does matter. And I'm running to be used. I'm running to be someone that can be relied upon uh, with my experience as an educator, my experience coming up through law school, getting familiar with policy and law. We're running for a change. Thank you. All right, thank you uh, both very much. And uh, you are, uh, as we bring on the candidates from District 7, I want to thank both uh, Mr. Rea and Mr. Guile for their uh, great questions and their answers certainly relative to their position on issues that affect District 5. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Ms. Neal. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, everyone. Okay, bye-bye.